It's yet another beautiful day in the city of Lagos and you're watching Meet the Boss brought to you by ConnectNigeria.com. I still remain your humble host, William Sosamba. And today, yet again, as we always do on the show, we are going to be bringing someone very special. Um, when I do bring this guest in, you know why I use the word special. Well, why not just sit back and relax and after this time out, I shall be unveiling my guest today. Looking for the best event? Log on to ConnectNigeria.com. Welcome back to the show, Meet the Boss, brought to you by ConnectNigeria.com. I did tell you before that short break that my guest today is special. And you will find out why I use the word special when I do introduce my guest eventually. Well, join me as I welcome to the program today, the one and only of Atunde Shobanjo, uh, the COO of Leo Burnett. Sir, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. And it's nice to be in your wonderful, and I must say beautiful environment. Today. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Now, at the beginning of the show, when I was uh, about to introduce you, I did use the word special because um, there is no two ways about it. The, the name, the brand name Leo Burnett is one name that resonates very well with a whole lot of Nigerians. So once more, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Now, let's get straight into it. Who is uh, Mr. Babatunde Shubanjo? <laughs> uh, good question. <laughs> uh, you know, to my staff, I like to, and I hate to use the word staff, to my colleagues, you mm -hmm. know, I'm just like, I'm just one of the people, uh, but I am actually the head of business for the Overnet okay. in Lagos. Okay. Uh, we are part of the Isai We Definite group. We are about seven, six companies mm -hmm. uh, within the group, mm -hmm. so I head one of the businesses, which is uh, the Overnet. Okay. I think as the uh, day goes on, I'll sort of take you around and you get to see the other companies. But, yeah. It will be a pleasure. Now let's even let's even let me ask a question surrounding the name. Yes, it's a popular name, and like every businesses or brands that have been on the show, there's always a history behind the, the name. So let's let's go on, let's let's take on that. Why the name Leo Burnett? What's the history behind that name? All right, uh, thank you for the question. Leo Burnett is actually our founder's name. Oh, okay. uh, Leo Burnett was founded in the 30s in Chicago, Illinois. Okay. And uh, as of today, there are about uh, over 85 uh, offices worldwide. Wow. I think we should be about the 85th one. Uh -huh. uh, but Leo Burnett is part of the Publicis Group. Publicis Group is about the third largest uh, marketing holding company uh, in the world. Fantastic. From trade between second and third. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. So Leo Burnett has been around for a while. And for those people who don't know, mm. um, Leo Burnett is globally is responsible for um, Tony the Tiger from uh, oh. Frosties, oh, okay. uh, the Jolly, uh, Jolly Green Giant um, okay. from um, um, Birds Eye Peas or, or one of those. Okay. So yeah, Leo Burnett has been around and doing iconic stuff. Fantastic, stuff for a while. fantastic. Now let's go into the nitty gritty. What are the services or products offered by Leo Burnett? We, we offer a range of services, and I don't want to sound like a cliche, but mm. you know, any marketing communications agency will come and tell, yes, we do advertising, we do this. Yeah. But uh, one thing that we pride ourselves on is, is our ethos, uh, what we ride on, what we build on. It's called humankind. Oh, okay. And humankind is where we put the individual at the center of what we do. Mm. Uh, because without that individual, you have no product to sell. Mm. So we need to cater to that individual's needs, to their demands, to, yeah. to what they are saying. Mm. So in that, you know, we are able to tailor services that suit the consumer, or, and I hate to use the word consumer, to, mm. to suit the individual okay. uh, to address what our brand needs are. Fantastic. So it's like you like you like personalizing whatever service you're rendering, even the give way, it the human face. Yes, and it's not just service external, but even internal. Mm. Humankind is something that we hold very dear. Oh, so that's nice. you know, for us, the person who serves you coffee is just as important as the guy who the big goes boss. to and file the one million naira check, mm. because mm. that person that's giving you coffee, you know. His job is also as part of satisfying yeah. your need, also keeping you active, keeping yeah, you going true, to true. be able to deliver something. So that person is just equally as important from the first line of the food chain to the very end. Very true. Well said. Well said. Now, for every business, there is no doubt that uh, there, there are usually challenges that comes that are very peculiar with different industries and different sectors. 
So let me let me take you on that. Uh, what what have been some of the challenges that uh, your your brand has faced over the years since it started operations here in Nigeria? Um, I mean, I guess it's to look at the big elephant in the room <laughs> and know that where we came from mm. uh, last year and even this year, mm. you know, in, in trying to adapt to our new normal. You know, yes. COVID disrupted a lot of things, and but the Good thing, and, and yeah, <laughs> I don't want you to sound like say that COVID was a good thing, but it has forced a lot of people to rethink the yes, way they work, true. to rethink their value offerings to, to the consumers and to individuals. Mm. So our industry, very particularly, has evolved, uh, I would say, almost five to ten years in one year. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're not used to, we're not, look, the way we used to do uh, marketing back then, you know, everyone saw your TV ad, your yes. billboard, your radio. Yes. But what happens when you're stuck at home? Mm -hmm. You know, no one's looking at the world. Yeah. No one's even buying newspapers anymore. True. So we've been forced to re look at what we're doing. Where digital in the last year has grown by close to 50%. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coming into this year, uh, digital um, spend is going to increase. While as things are easing up, yes, traditional media is going to actually get back to normal. Mm -hmm but it will still be at a decline compared to what digital is doing. Let's do it. So, you know, we are where we, we actually take brands to meet the consumers where they are. And who are the consumers today? The majority of our consumers are our, our millennials and Gen Xs. True. And, and where are they? They are in the online space. Very true. So how do we take our brands to go and meet them? And I have a very funny story. I was interviewing uh, someone to come and join us very young lady at the time and we were talking about oh, what ads have you seen? Mm. What TV stations do you work in? She was like, oh, I don't watch TV. It's like, why do you want to work in advertising? And, you know, I, I thought she was being awkward but all of a sudden I was the one who was behind. Yep. Because, you know, for her, that little 12-inch screen is where everything is done from morning to night. Mm. And I'm sure the same for you. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. Now, now let's talk. Let's talk a bit more about the the, the evolution. That's right from some of the things you mentioned in your last comment. How does it How does it feel uh, knowing that Leo Burnett as a brand is one of is referred to as one of the leaders when it comes to the advertising industry? How does it make you feel knowing that your brand has gotten to that level where people look at you as a leader? And tell us a bit more about some of the evolution when it comes to advertising that has passed through the chain over the years to where we are today. Uh, I feel very flattered by the mm. by the leadership uh, position, status. Status <laughs> that you know you have put upon us. Mm. Uh, but Leo Burnett is not one to shy for, from a challenge. Mm. We like to look at ourselves as the, the David of the advertising industry. Okay. And we know what David did in the Bible. Sure, sure. Slave sure. of the light. Sure. Uh, so for us, you know, for, for us to be getting noticed in, in, in this field that is growing in Nigeria mm. and expanding mm. um, and where technology is becoming a huge factor and for us to be noticed, it's actually, uh, it's very flattering. Mm. Uh, but for us, you know, looking at, at the way uh, the industry is changing, yeah. one thing I always tell my people, uh, you know, I always sit down with my uh, head of creative and, you know, we're always banking. Mm. The one thing that we, we can see the shift in the industry we used to have a situation where our traditional means of advertising used, yeah. to be the lead, uh, used to be the lead way of communication. So the TV, outdoor radio, that was great. Mm. And then we used to use digital and experiential okay. as a support medium. Okay. Uh, in today's day and age, that has been flipped on its head. Mm. And uh, in today's day and age, we have digital as the lead medium and traditional mm. being the support medium. Mm. And mm. what we are now beginning to see, the disruption in the industry, um, I remember when I, you know, I finished school, I was 18, you know, you still have to uh, do your master's or go and get yeah. a job. Yeah. But you know, from 18, you're beginning to play an adult. Sure. But we're beginning to see there's a shift in that, where entrepreneurial adulthood is literally starting from 13, 14. From the cradle. You know, <laughs> how did uh, uh, um, Kylie Jenner become a billionaire before she was 21? Yeah. So the entrepreneurial spirit is starting earlier. Yeah. Uh, so how do we start talking to these consumers who are actually starting earlier? Early. So we can begin to see that the shift is actually, dr it's, it's drastic now. Mm. Uh, we've gone past the industrial age, uh, we've gone past the technological age. We're at a disruption age right now. So. Mm.
Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, let's look at uh, the, the climate or the environment in which we find ourselves. Um, still, still as a, a kind of follow-up to the issue of challenges, um, how would you rate, from your experience so far, how would you rate the business culture in Nigeria, generally speaking, from, from your own perspective? The business culture is changing. I think at a point in time we were stagnated and we were used to doing things in our way. Mm. Uh, we had international mm. companies coming in to change the way we perceive way businesses were running. Yeah. Um, a lot of companies in Nigeria are actually affiliated with international companies, but the culture of mm. the Nigerian mm. means you cannot take what is working over there or the way we communicate to consumers over there. Really? I think I that think same it's thing automatically to work here. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the, the Niger no die spirit and attitude. Mm. You know, we deal with a lot. We're the most yeah. resilient people. So for us, we have to you know create our own strategy for communication. Mm. And then we have African countries looking to us as well. We are we are like the benchmark. Yeah. Um, and then you now look at what's going on today. Um, and one thing I also talk about a lot is the marriage of technology and technology, digital, and marketing. Mm -hmm. And I think they all work hand in hand. You see what's happening in the fintech space. Mm. Uh, fintech space right now, uh, the way these guys are starting up businesses, getting notice from abroad, mm. um, the traditional banks are they're, they're literally shaking in their boots because these guys, they're causing a huge disruption. But it's a disruption for the better because the consumer is changing. Yeah. And in understanding that the consumer is changing, which is where we come in, we have to we understand the consumer. That's what humankind is about. Mm. And understanding that the consumer is changing and technology is leading this. This is where we are also changing and evolving and using technology to lead our conversation, lead our discussions, and engage the consumer one on one before we even think about traditional. Traditional. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Now I still have some more questions for you, but I think at this point in time we'll go on a quick break and when we come back, I'll relate the main questions I have for you. Well viewers, you see watching Meet the Boss brought to you by ConnectNigeria.com and yes, my guest is no other than Mr. Babatunde Shobanjo, the COO of the wonderful brand known as Neil Burnett. When we come back, I shall still be asking some more questions, so please don't go nowhere. We shall be right back. You're watching Meet the Boss. Looking for the best events? Log on to ConnectNigeria.com Welcome back to the second half of today's program, Meet the Boss, brought to you by ConnectNigeria.com and I still have my guest today, Mr. Shobanjo Babatunde. I took that name in reverse, by the way. <laughs> the CEO of Leo Burnett. And uh, before that break, we have been sharing some wealth of experience from the, uh, the background of advertising here in Nigeria. We're back for the second phase. So you're welcome back to the program. Thank you very much. And it's been nice talking to you so far. Second half already. Yeah. Second I'm half already. Good time. <laughs> well, the popular saying goes that whenever you're having fun, time does exactly. indeed go by. Now, before that break, you you, you had told us uh, a bit of background uh, for, the, for your brand, the Urbanet, the origin and the digital space and the innovative and disruptive space we find ourselves today. Now, I want to get your take on on, on the government because there is no two ways about it. There's no two. The government has a major role to play when it comes to setting up a business and thriving. So, what would you say the, the government of Nigeria can do to help support businesses, especially those in the SME space? The the traditional ways, you know, you're going to a bank to do things and stuff is it was stagnating a lot of businesses. Things were not moving as fast as they should. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID helped us realize there are different ways now to do where we are taking advantage of technology and the digital space. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for the government, the digital space is one space where they are having a huge challenge in regulating mm -hmm. because the infinity of the digital space means you know your, your level of control is, is limited beyond, it's, yeah it's, it's very limited yes because you, you think you control one area but it's like looking in the sky the sky doesn't stop and that's yeah. what the digital space is. it yes. keeps on growing yes you know back in the days i used to have i could tell you five or ten people's phone numbers but now i only probably only know two true but i have about a thousand people on my phone true 
and where is that being stored? It's not stored on my phone. There's a cloud somewhere. That digital space, that technology and stuff is beginning to change, change things. Mm -hmm. And our youth, are, they're seeing that. Actually, they're creating that for themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think government, for us, have to find a way to collaborate with the youth today mm -hmm. to understand the space that they're playing in and enable them properly mm -hmm. in that space, as well as mm -hmm. even the traditional businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Nigeria has its challenges. Yeah. Uh, our people, I, I keep on saying that the only natural disaster in Nigeria <laughs> is the people. Mm. Uh, but even with, regardless of that, we are the most resilient people. I think to get the necessary support that we need, um, I think we will thrive as a people fantastic. and as businesses. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, um, I like the fact that you used the word collaboration in, um, in um, your last comment. Now, maybe I should, I should ask you this question. How important do you do you personally feel that co uh, collaboration between businesses and brands, how important is that to, towards uh, sustainability and growth? Okay, um, we're beginning to find, you know, I talked about disruption in digital space. Yes. But what we're also beginning to find, a new form of disruption, is, is collaboration between mm. businesses and mm. brands. Uh, I'll use the example of uh, the industry I'm in, the marketing industry, and I'll look at our relationship with our, our, our brands that we work on. So, you know, back in the days, we used to be just regarded as, okay, that's our ad agency, the brand should be ad, we put it out there. But in today's day and age, it's one way I like to relate to my clients, yeah. especially when we start the business. You know, one thing I quickly tell them is, I want to be the extension of whatever function it is in your company. So you're not looking at me as an end product or an expense, mm. but a partner in when it comes to your innovative space, what we're doing, we'll do it together. Mm. And you know, we come up with solutions. So in today's day and age, you're beginning to see that collaboration grow more and more, uh, especially in a space where physical assets are reducing and uh, everything we're doing is in uh, spaces where people are not owning things anymore. Mm. So look at what's happening and this is where collaboration actually comes in. Look at what's happening with the brands like Uber yes. and uh, Airbnb. Yeah. Uber does not own any of the cars, but it's owned by individuals. Airbnb is the same uh, principle as well. Mm -hmm. And we're beginning to see the likes of Amazon going to that collaboration space. So mm -hmm. collaboration is actually very, very key for sustainability of any brand out there. You can't go into uh, any venture out there by yourself anymore. anymore. Now, what would you say to some of those, some, some, a few other traditional brands and businesses that still live in this, uh, this past notion of measing? It's my business, I, I should own it a hundred percent, I should do my things a hundred percent. In line with what you do, this, this narrative which I totally concur with about collaboration, what would you say to such brand owners? Um, it's, it's the same way, and I always reference my industry as an example. Mm. You know, back in the days, and as a Leo Burnett principle as well, back mm. in the days, brands used to sell to consumers. They used to tell them how to drink their Coca-Cola or Pepsi. They used mm. to tell them how to eat their food. Mm. But in today's day and age, it's about co-creation, where the consumer is co-creating with the brand. The brand. Uh, so that collaboration is actually a lot more, uh, it's a lot bigger mm. in, in this industry than um, actually globally. Uh, the co-creation between brands and consumer is actually growing and it's a lot bigger than a lot of people actually get to notice. So if you go into any venture thinking you are the one bringing the exact solution, mm. uh, you, you end up like the businesses that thought that in the beginning and are no longer in existence. Actually, no longer existence. And today's uh, day and age where people do not have the patience and uh, in this day and age where I can just switch over easily. Yes. You'll be gone in no You'll time. You'll be gone in no time. Yeah, well said. Now let's come to a very um, a very unique, I mean we're, we're coming to the home stretch for today's um, uh, interview. But I still have a few more questions. So let's talk about the role of mentorship. It's another word and another very popular word we hear a lot, especially in the disruptive space. Do you have mentors? I and mean, if you do, who, who, who are they? Um, I have I have quite a bit of them, mm. uh, but I, there's one in particular. Okay. I, I would want to say that I have been very blessed and uh, very opportune to actually meet quite a few important people. Yeah. Uh, but one one of my key mentors is the chairman of our company, uh, Mr. Bedu Shobanjo, okay. and which a lot of people know is my father, mm. and he actually started. Um, 
in the industry over 40 years ago. But mm. um, he started with inside communications when he started when he ventured out on his own. Mm. He started with inside communication, and that's about I think about 41 years now, wow. or almost 42 years wow. uh, that they started that. And um, he'll tell you he's retired, but <laughs> a bunch of us know <laughs> we, we, we know different. Mm. But you know he's been like my inspiration and my okay. mentor and. He's also been a mentor for some of the um, top uh, industry experts today because almost all of them, all the top people, actually mm. came through the University of Insight, mm. as mm. they like to call it. But uh, regardless of that, you know, um, I have the um, foresight um, as well as you know the, the benefit of hanging out with him, seeing him on a daily basis, and him even being able to offer advice. And also his relationships that he has, he has op opened me to, to that as well, mm. uh, where I get to meet a lot of influential people and I get to learn from them. Mm. Uh, but it doesn't mean like, you know, he just paves the road for you. Uh, he's also one of the people that believes in, you know, hard work. Uh, he's a stickler for time and discipline. Mm. And in your personal or, or, or professional life, mm. he believes it's something that you have to adhere to, uh, to be successful. So there are no shortcuts in life. Fantastic. Now, <clears throat> as a follow-up to that, uh, so 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 how so what would you tell? How important, in form of an advice, would you tell maybe upcoming um, um, brands or individuals to invest their time and energy looking for mentors? It is absolutely important, and I think you know, and I'm not trying to plug <laughs> a book here. Yeah. I think any who is starting a business, especially our younger generation today, mm. they need to pick up, uh, it's one of my favorite books, um, and it's a book on um, my father, Mr. Mm. Bill yeah. uh, basically his business autobiography okay. called The Will to Win. Uh, it, reading that book, it actually shows you the, the journey from, you know, um, from humble beginnings. Mm. So he wasn't like, um, look at Donald Trump where he's always had a silver spoon in his mouth and you know and that you can see that across and the way yeah, yeah. you know my dad started from humble beginnings and he grew his business to being uh, the biggest in West Africa mm. uh, he even started at a time where the industry was dominated by foreigners mm. and mm. you know being in Nigeria competing with foreigners in on a Nigerian space where there are not that many people and being yeah. able to succeed yeah. and being able to listen to those stories of success on a daily basis mm -hmm. you know i think every young person needs to pick up a book to learn but having a mentor that can guide you mm -hmm. uh, you need somebody to go to, to, to it's almost like it's almost like when um, you know as a married person mm -hmm. you can't figure out everything for yourself mm -hmm. at the point time you have to go to your spouse seek advice, here and and seek advice. Mm -hmm. and it's the same thing with my colleagues and and, and everybody else but you know, the slightest um, advice I need or anything I'm thinking, mm. I, I tend to bounce it off him. Mm. Say, okay, what do you think about this? Mm. Uh, even, you know, for, for a man <laughs> mm. that is past 75, 76, mm. and the insights he can give you on the technology world. <laughs> we'll you know, blow at, you. at first, I'm like, okay, what was this guy? You know, <laughs> you know, his time has passed. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. But no, you know, the likes of him, you talk to, um, you know, our vice chairman, Mr. Jimmy Awashika as well. Mm. You know, when they start talking about technology and digital, I'm like, isn't it past your time? Isn't but, it? You know, the one thing I tell you, always be open to learn mm. on a daily basis. Mm. So That's good. Now, it, interestingly, I have uh, a copy of the book you, just, you were just talking about, The, 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 will, the, the will to Win, uh, by the story of Biodun Shobanjo. Yes. Now, how important would you say um, reading, though you talked, you touched it briefly. Uh, maybe I should start with saying, that. are you a book reading person? I've gone through phases. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a point in time where um, you know, trying to get into the workspace and you're trying to take in as much knowledge as possible, and then after a while, you know, you get into a comfortable space and you're not. You're probably watching more TV, mm. you know, watching the news, mm. and then you get into a position of influence and authority. Yeah. And you feel, okay, I need to learn a lot more. Yes. And today's day and age, we have access to almost everything. Every book can be switched into an audio book or a visual book where someone mm. is reading the story. Mm. Uh, whichever way you are consuming your own information. Um, so, you know, it's not just today, I, I'm reading a book. Yeah. But, you know, this book is also 
in audio format. Uh, there's a video format mm. uh, and whatnot. Mm. So whichever way you're continuing your information, as long as you are learning, the important thing is continue basis. to learn. Yes, fantastic. Now we're coming to the wrap today, but um, I still would want you to give some final words of advice to young persons out there, young business owners, young executives, and maybe you should also tell us your dream for Leo Burnett say, in the next five years. <laughs> ah, thank you. Um, for young people, I almost feel like I don't need to advise them anymore because in seeing what they're doing, um, you know, it was, you know, my chairman and I were having a conversation and we we're talking about brands mm. and consumers. And um, we we're saying, okay, where, where, where are the consumers today? Where's the uh, population of consumers? And it's within the Gen X's and Millennials. Mm. And they even account for over uh, 60 to 70 percent of the population of Nigeria. Mm. And our brands are the ones going to talk to them. Mm. And if you are the ones going to go and talk to them, and I had this discussion with my colleagues as well, um, how do these people behave? Yeah. This is where the consumer, again, you know, our way of working also comes in. Where how do these people behave? How do they act? Mm. If I wear a suit and tie, I'm going to talk to them. Would they relate to that? Would they relate to that? these guys are? <laughs> I, I, I hardly doubt it. So, mm. you know, um, the, the whole suit and, die, suit and tie way of relating to people is gone. Everything is relaxed. You should mm. be able to come down to somebody yes. or whichever way it is, it is and, and be able to communicate with them and understand what they're doing. Mm. Uh, so for, for, the, for the young people out there, um, who are paving the way because these guys are new they're actually paving new paths yes. um, it's just to keep on the grind and keep on hard work keep on keep on working hard um, like I said earlier there's no shortcut to success mm. so uh, it's just to keep on grinding keep mm. on doing what you're doing and make it an honest living good good and um, finally where, where, do you, where do you want to see your brand in the next five, five years oh, Neil Burnett in five years <laughs> We are, we're doing some amazing stuff right now. Mm. Uh, in part of what we're doing, like I said, centers around technology, and not just digital, but technology. Um, and a lot of our offerings that we're, 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 we're bringing our clients to mm. come and witness. Mm. Um, you know, things that are supposed to change the way Nigerians view marketing. Okay. Uh, you know, you painted us, or, <laughs> I didn't want to say paint, but you said we're the leaders in our industry. Mm. But I don't think we, for, for us, we still feel there's a lot for us to do, mm. even on, on our learning. But a lot of things that we're trying to do, um, and in partnership with uh, all other publicist companies, their offerings, mm. Uh, mm. and with the Leo Burnett Network uh, globally, mm. um, I won't want to give away too many secrets, but uh, let's just say there are some crazy things that are about to happen. <laughs> I don't want to say I mean, but I want to say crazy. And crazy meaning disruptive. Disruptive. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I, I wouldn't have said it any better, but that, that's a good one. Wow. What a day it's been. But uh, I, I, Too I, short. I, I yeah, time, time flies when you're having fun, but uh, it's been wonderful having you on the program. Thank today, you Mr. very Martin much. Thank you. And uh, we, we will continue to monitor the success stories of uh, Leo Burnett as a brand and from time to time we'll try to report on it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, viewers, you've heard it all from the one and only Babatunde Shubanjo, the COO of Leo Burnett, and what a discussion it's been. We've, we've looked at so many wonderful history behind the brand and so, also some insightful information that can help you as, a, as an individual and even your business to grow. Remember, you can, watch, um, the, you can also watch this program on our YouTube page. Uh, uh, just go to Connect Nigeria on YouTube. And you can go to our website, www.connectnigeria.com front slash CNTV to catch this, uh, this episode of the program and many other wonderful interviews that we've had on the program. Now, I also say that you can also follow us on social media at Connect Nigeria, all across all the platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. And I'm William Suzomba, if you want to also reach out to me on all the platforms too. If you want someone interesting to see on this program, do give us a mail, contact us, and we'll do our best to bring that person to you. Until we come your way, same station, same network, same frequency, I still remain William Suzomba telling you to continue to keep a positive mind. And as I always say, the sky might just be the beginning of your success growth. Bye, guys.